All right, guys, how you doing? Welcome back to the Hashtag Academy Second Chance Series, episode two today. We're at Coles Park on a wind-swept day in North London, and it's time to boil it down to just 15 players. We're starting off with 30. They made it through the hectic trial days that we put on last weekend. Hopefully you've seen episode one already. If you haven't, click the i button or check out the link in the description. It's a top quality episode. Today, we've got two teams. The team from the Saturday trial going up against the team from the Sunday trial. They're gonna play each other in one 90 minute game. And from those 30 players, we need to take one squad through of roughly 15 to 16 players that will play hashtag United in the next episode. So it's a big game, lots on the line. Let's remember what is on the line. Not just a chance to get a next episode, a chance, of course, to win the whole series. A chance to get five thousand pounds in a contract with hashtag united and of course to get to become an adidas glitch athlete with all kinds of perks i'm talking lots of new boots and loads of other things that will make you feel like a professional footballer every single week also a little reminder for you guys uh, while we're talking about glitch make sure you've got the glitch app okay there's a link in the description download it because not only is there extra behind the scenes content on there we're going to be using that app in subsequent episodes in this series to give you guys a chance to actually vote on what players make it through. So you are very much in control of this series. There is no devs today, he's on holiday. So I'm wearing both the uh, Spencer and devs hat today. But of course, I've got loads of hashtagians helping me make big decisions, okay? We've got Seb back in the fray, the man that said, remember the name Scott Pollock, Sebby boy is back helping us pick players. We've got loads of other lads here to help out. And we've got some special guests as well. We've got uh, Tim Z from Copper 90 and we've got stat man Dave. Dave is a player who loves identifying top quality players, so hopefully he can do that for us today. So that's what you're gonna see in today's episode. Now it's time to meet the players, put them in their teams and let them know what they're gonna be doing. Let's do it. Right boys, welcome back. Well done for getting this five. You've done fantastically well. The final 30. Some of you might have even seen the first episode which went on to YouTube yesterday. Hopefully you enjoyed that. You know what's on offer, obviously, a chance to shine, chance to get yourself out there. There's already some, some fan favourites coming through in the YouTube comments. You've already been put into your, your squads for today, which is great. We've got Saturday trialists versus Sunday trialists. We have done one little transfer of players that was purely just to make sure positions were, were even on the two squads. So you're going to play each other in a 90 minute game. Obviously, some of you will start on the bench. You'll get subbed on. You'll all get you know, the appropriate amount of minutes. No one should get less than 45 minutes minimum today. You're going to have managers assigned to you. So uh, red team is going to be managed by Andy, Cade Watts and Paul Nash, both hashtag legends. Give them a round of applause. Not been around as long, but equally as legendary, we have Tekka's Guru and James Mountford who are going to be managing the yellow team. Give them a clap. We're going to take roughly 15 to 16 of you through today, so about half, to make one squad, which next episode will go up against the hashtag team. Okay, so you know what's on the line, obviously, and it's just one step closer to ultimately winning the process, if one person in front of me right now will do. So it's super exciting to have you here. Give it your best, boys. Listen to your managers. If you've got any concerns, any, any questions, you know who to go to. Enjoy. All right, boys, let's go. How are you approaching today as a manager? Yeah, so obviously managing the red team today, which is the Saturday team. So in terms of today, in terms of the platform, which is going to give them uh, enough time and space in order to go and do their thing, there's no point, I don't think, um, trying to, you know, we're going to let them express themselves, basically. It's their stage. We're going to place them on it and we're going to let them perform. Uh, for me, it's just another game, really. You've got to try and relay that to the boys. It's all about them, isn't it, really? So it's about expressing themselves, having an identity when they play, and yeah, showing us technically, physically, and tactically when they're on the ball what they can do. What makes a player stand out and what gives them that hashtag United quality? Oh, that's a, that's a big question, that is. I mean, there's so much that you've got to take into consideration when the players are playing. But ultimately, we're looking for people who can step up, who can perform well. Um, there is pressure with playing for hashtag and there's definitely pressure on today so we'll see which players are able to to um, you know come out on top of that and, and play well under the pressure that they're going to be in. I think you have to have character on the pitch for me I mean so it's a one-off club isn't it it's like a family and we're looking not only for amazing players but we're looking for personality um, and yeah so it's just about that identity thing really what can they show us on the ball when and where to do things on the pitch. All right, Fainty, big game ahead of you. How are you feeling? Yeah, I'm feeling confident. Um, it's a good day out to play some football. Um, pretty impressed with my team that played last week. So, yeah, pretty confident. Uh, I'm feeling all right, to be honest. Uh, I've been really excited after the last trial. 
been looking forward to it and hopefully I can progress again and get through. Yeah, nervous obviously, a lot, a lot of good talented players here but hoping to make an impact and try and get through to the next round, yeah. What have you got to bring to the table today to show all of those judges? There's a lot of eyes on you today. Um, I've got a bit of pace on me, strength definitely and a shot on target definitely, 100%. Well, I like to get on the ball a lot and I like to attack a little bit and cover people and try and do as much as I can really. Bit of pace, you know, getting in behind the defence, Maybe try to win the ball back for the team, bring players into play, you know, my teammates. I'm going to try and bring some special goals. Uh, last week I did score quite a nice goal, so I'm hoping to reciprocate that in, in this game. And you've actually played against us before, right? Uh, yeah, yeah, for Newby Forest. But I think that game I played really well, I got an assist and played quite well, yeah. Ladies and gentlemen, here we are back in position at Coles Park. Actually, for the last time ever, this was the last game we play at Coles Park. We're moving to Tilbury soon for next season, of course. But it's great that these Academy hopefuls are going to get to play on the pitch that Hashtag United did play on for their title winning season, of course. I'm joined by Lee Hursett for this massive game in some of these lads' footballing futures. Lee, what are you looking for? Um, I'm looking for excitement today. I'm looking for someone who can do the right things in the right areas, but also give me that hint of something good, energetic, something that's going to make me go, wow, look at this guy. That's what I'm looking he for He wants today. that X factor. Okay, yes. that's hopefully what we're going to find today. Let's take a look at the teams that are lining up for both the Saturday and Sunday trialists. So, on the Saturday team in the red bibs, managed by Andy Cade Watts, starting off with Cabin Clark in goal. In defence, we have Sid Peters, Louis Burkane, Sean Alexander, Joe Debel. In midfield, we have Isaac Skubich, Kieran Huddett. And then ahead of the centre midfielders, we have Jake Lindsay, Jack Hall, Joshua Asude, and leading the line up front is Joseph Charles. On the bench, that leaves Tim Pittman as a goalkeeper, Samraj Gill, Oliver Coleman, and Roshai Palmer. Now let's take a look at the yellow team who are going to be managed by Isa, aka Tekka's Guru, and James Mountford. In goal, we have Louis Lawler starting things off. In defence, we have Robert Miles, Okrute Izachukwu, a.k.a. Izu, Josh George and Omar Chowdhury. In midfield, we have Bradley Empson and Tyler Kavanagh. Ahead of them, we have Nikati Gench, we have Bertug Sehan and Javin Dugan. Up front, leading the line for the Yellows is Adi Lahan. On the bench, we have Felix Hull as the other goalkeeping option, Carlos Ospina, Andy Konjuvka and Fahinti Falola. They're the starting 11s. If people have been put on the bench to start, it's purely for positional reasons. Maybe we've got too many in one position, but everyone will get a certain amount of minutes and be assessed fairly. Let's play football. It's the yellow team that are going to get us underway here. Adi Lahan, the big man up front for Isis, boys in yellow. And we are live. Well, we're not live. We're watching on YouTube. How do you feel about a winger that likes to run across the field like that is it better for him to run more direct and try and take on his man and get get more territory definitely i feel at the level we play at uh you can cut inside there's nothing wrong with it but oh he's missed the chance here yellows with a great strike and that was gench who's hit that one on nej as he likes to be known defensive error from joe de bell what a save you yeah. have to say from cabin clark throw in for miles it's going to drop into lahan who's super strong good tackle from sean alexander Sahan gets the ball back to Empson. Over to Omar Chowdhury now, the right back. He's going to look to whip one in, in towards the big striker. Louis Burkane gets across it and finds Skubic. And now Kieran Huddard overplaying it a little bit. Lahan doing well to wrestle his opponents off the ball. Ref's going to play advantage. No, he's going to pull it back for the free kick. Decent area, this. Free kick here then for the Yellows. Got Gench standing over it. Who's the other lad? Oh, it's Dugan. Dugan's going to go into the box. Gensh hits it on the left foot. Good Ooh. save from Cabin Clark, who's been made to make two saves already in this game. Jack Hall goes back to Sid Peters, who returns the ball to Hall. What can Hall do here? Com confident on the ball, composed, and he's switching it over. That's a, that's a good that's pass. A great ball. Now Joe Jabell can get it under, but it's great pressure from Nedj. Good ball down the line. Right, let's see what Joshua Sude can do now. As he tries to get past. Oh, that's a foul. And I think it Is it a penalty? It's a pen. He's given it. He's given the pen. Oh, I thought it might have been just outside the box. That is a, a foul by Josh George against the very quick Joshua Asude. Isaac Skubic to be the first goal scorer in the game. Against the run of play, you have to say. Skubic puts it low in the left corner past 
Louis Lawler, who went the right way, but couldn't stop it. 1-0 to the Reds. 1-0 to the Reds. Great penalty. Great run from Joshua. Um, he's the man to look out for. <sighs> Sorry, boys. You know what question's coming up. How does it feel to be 1-0 down? To be honest, we've been all over them. Um, just a little mistake there. I reckon we'll get back into it. Right, I'm sat here amongst it with the judges. I've got Faz to my right. He's got a lot written down on that clipboard. Who stood out to you so far? You know what? This is actually a joint decision for me and H. We've got 84. The guy with the do-rag. Everyone's Josh Durag, that's my guy. Josh Durag, yeah. He's making a lot of noise right now. Just won a penalty. And then we've got number 88 uh, in the yellow. Bit of a drug bar. Bully. That's what we like so far. Lahan, so good at holding his ball up, has to be said. Making it very hard for the defenders. Gets a shot off. It wasn't the most threatening of shots, Lee, but he's a handful. And now they know their game plan, the Yellows, isn't it? Get it in to Adi Lahan. He will hold it up for you all day long. Kavanagh gets it over to Dugan now. And the Yellows definitely having more of the ball in dangerous areas than the Reds. Dugan firing into Great the box. Great ball. Great ball. A little bit behind Lahan. Chance for Emerson on the edge of the box to strike one. Closed down by Skubic. Oh, and Charles with a the layoff there that's asked a lot of Asude, who is absolutely rapid, it has to be said. That quick, he's tripping over his own feet. Ned's going to run this, but Sean Alexander does very well to get across. Just 16 years of age, the youngest player left in the process. Everyone's focusing on Joshua because of his lightning pace, but I feel like Dugan has got a lot more in him to offer, and I, I hope he will show it. Sean Alexander, you have to say, 16 years of age, yeah. He's going up against Adi Lahan, who is quite a few years older than him. He's 19. And he's holding his own right now. He's trying to, at least. Adi Lahan is very strong. Right, very early days, I'd say, but um, I've got some notes here. I'm making notes for good and bad. Um, some of the guys maybe made a few mistakes, so I've noted that down as well. So we're ruling people out as much as ruling them in. And Sehan's coming very deep for a man who's been asked to play in the hole. He's sitting very deep right now. Needs to get further forward for the Yellows to give Adi Lahan something to work with. Joshua Sude running in, making inroads. Good pass into the middle here. As he looks to unleash Jack Hall. He's still going. Can he get past Izu on the left foot? It's a strong save with the leg of Louis Lawler. Great save by Lawler. It's amazing how many times Joshua Sude finds himself in on his left foot on the left side, considering he's playing right mid. Passed forward there by Miles. Great feet by Nedge. It's nice from Nedge. He looks to switch it over. Oh, he's Peter made it. Do enough. Dugan can punish now. Is he going to go in towards the box? Oh, he's hit one. An interesting choice. He didn't want to take his man on or cross it. He tried to shoot. Chowdhury. Yeah, they should try to play it about right now. Doing a good job of it. Over to George. George can take the ball forward. Fizzes it into the feet of Nedge. Gets it over to the left-back, Miles. This is okay from the Yellows right now. Nedge getting it into Kavanagh, keeping possession well. Kavanagh, is he going to hit one? He's, he's lined it up. He's gone up against Adi Lahan. He finds Sehan. What can Sehan do? He gets the shot off. Oh, He's just off target. But you have to say that is good build-up from the Yellows from back to front. I mean, that was probably about 19 passes there. What a great strike at the end. Un unfortunate to, to miss and not score. All right, I'm here with Timsy on my left and Statman Dave on my right. Timsy, Yo. you look like you've got quite a lot written down. That's what I like to see. A Talk to bit, me. Yeah. Who have you got written down? Names and numbers. I want to know who is standing out for you. So for me personally, the one who's been the most composed on the ball has been number 50. So Isaac Skubic, I think, centre mid. But yeah, 18 years old, he just looks very comfortable in the, on the ball. You know, he's been caught, a bit, uh, caught out a few times, but the conditions aren't the best. You know, it's a bit windy, a bit bobbly, but he's looked um, nice in midfield. It, both teams have sort of struggled to control it in the midfield, I think, but he's been the one for me that stands out and has been able to actually control the ball a little bit in the middle, control the tempo a bit. So he's stood out for me. Palmer rides that challenge and switches it over to DeBell. He's getting a lot of the ball right back. He is. I'd like to see him get forward a bit more on the overlap. I mean, it's hard to overlap Joshua because he's got lightning pace, but... Here he goes again. Sude. Oh, Sude, can he finish it? Oh, he's... you know what? He went down from the keeper's challenge, but he had already kicked the ball off. He wasn't going to get there. I mean, <laughs> what a run. I mean, I'm lost for words, Ben. He is lightning quick. It's not just the speed, though. It's, the, it's his close control. Yeah. Keep the ball at his feet. Usually people of that speed can't keep the ball under control because they're running at, at great speed. But he manages to do it so well. Skubic spraying it over. 
to Hall. It's a good pass. Just looking for that incisive pass still. It's going to come across to Asude. It's just bounced above him. Can he cross? What's his crossing like? It's a decent ball in! Oh, and Coleman with an amazing chance, Lee. <laughs> wow. Um, I've been saying I want a bit more from Joshua getting down the line and whipping in crosses, and he's he's proved me he's proved me wrong. He showed that he can do it. I questioned it. He can do it, and very very nearly scored there. Yeah, it's been all right. I, f I feel like at times it was uh, it was rushed instead of kind of like settling down, moving the ball. I just felt it just was a little bit rushed at first. But yeah, I mean, slowly as we got into the game a bit, we kind of moved there a bit more quicker. So yeah. So yeah, it's been alright. It's been alright. I think we could do better though. I think we can do better. That's what I like to hear. How do you think it's gone? Yeah, I would agree. To be honest, uh, the yellows—they've been really composed on the ball. Every time they've got it, they haven't rushed it. They've just kept it simple, made us run around. Two first names, just like Sean Alexander. Good touch in there from Ned. He's impressed me thus far, has to be said. And look at the pace from Falola here, who beats his man. Still a lot of red shirts in there. Tries to fizz it in. It's not a bad ball, but there's no one at the back stick. Or Spinner had come central. And Sahan forces the mistake. Palmer on the ball for the Reds. Oh, I think, you know what? One of them's onside, and I think it is this man, Asude, who's kept it in, hugging the touchline here. Fakes the cross. Plays it back to the edge of the box for Palmer. It's not set up nicely for him, but he's found a shot, which is deflected away by Sahan. Scoobitz trying to keep it alive. Goes over to Hall. Puts the right foot across him. Too much on it. Goes short to a spinner who's not being picked up. Can a spinner deliver? It's not a bad ball in! Falola tries to get there. Cleared by Sid Peters. Asude now going to try and make something go the other way. And this is what he does. He gets the ball down and he runs like the wind. Well done from Dugan there. Good tracking from Dugan who's, who's potentially just as quick. Yeah. Gill trying to squeeze his way out of two yellow players. Nedge trying to find Falola. It's a mistake by Peters and Falola could capitalise on it. He's got not many people out there with him. A spinner's behind. He finds him on the edge of the box. A spinner's hit one from distance, which dropped, but maybe not the best decision from a spinner there. I'd like to see people a bit more confident in the ball, not feeling the rush to shoot. Hold on to it a little bit. It's going to come to Gill on the edge of the box here. He looks to find Asude. Asude is going to whip it in. It's not a bad ball again. It finds Gill. He lays it off to Skubic who hits it. And it's a good block from Sehan. Not for the first time since he moved into centre mid. Peters coming through. Sends it over to his opposite fullback, Debell, who can't bring it down. And it's a long pass here from Dugan. Looking for Halola. Halola wins the knock on. A spinner could get away with it here. Can he get a shot off? Still a spinner. Oh, and he's done well to create an opportunity there, but the shot was off target. Gill's been solid in there. He has. Uh, since he's come on, he's he surprised me. He's, he's keeping the ball very well for the Reds, and I feel like he's the one ticking them over. It's a lovely little pass here from Skubic, trying to unlock the pace of Asude. Still Joshua Asude. He's got Skubic behind him. He finds it. Can Skubic get a shot off on the left foot here? He's going to hit it. Oh, it's a fantastic save from Felix Hull. And a lovely left-footed shot from Skubic. Great save. I mean, that man again running down the line, cut back in. Joshua I set it to Skubic. He's cutting on his left and hit a beautiful strike, but great save. Fantastic save. Sehan's going to take this corner on the right foot. It's not a bad delivery. Izu trying to meet it. It's going to come to Miles on the edge of the box, trying to get a shooting chance. Still, Miles, can he shoot? Oh, it's just off target. And that's not bad from the left back. It isn't. I thought he was going to strike it straight away, but he's calm and composed, beat a couple players, and he's still got the shot off. Alexander into Gill. His touch eludes him. Sahan does well. Empson keeps it in. Just. Hall gets it off him. That ball does enough to cause Izu a problem here. And Joshua Sule could punish. Can he get the shot off? He does, but it is over. It's forced over, in fact, for a corner. Good recovery in the end from Josh George. Hall with the corner. It's a good corner. And Felix Hall gets something on it as the referee blows for half time. So a little break here for the two teams. Main thoughts from the first half, Lee? Reds go in 1 0 up at half time due to a penalty. But I feel the Yellows should be winning this game. Yeah, yellow, Yellows had no shortage of chances. A few substitutions for the Reds definitely changed things. No doubt we'll see some more subs done by the managers now. But as it stands, 1-0 to the Red team, the Saturday team, if you like, against Sunday's Yellow Boys. See you back in a second.
Right, Spen, it's half time. Tell me, what's going on? How's it going? I thought the yellow started really well and unlucky to go behind from that penalty. Um, but it was well taken by Skubic. And then after they made some changes, the Reds, I think they did really well in the second half of the first half. They were the better team at the, at the close of play there. Obviously, some more players to get involved, see what they've got to offer. I'd like to see some more individual moments of, of, of brilliance, really. We've seen a lot of stuff from, from Asude, who I know is going to get a lot of the headlines. I'd like to see some end product from him. Yeah. Put some good balls in, but he's had a few shooting opportunities. I'd like to see him finish them. And I'd like to see uh, some, a little bit more finesse on the passes from the midfield, particularly on the yellow side. I think they're doing some really good things and they're trying to play football the right way. They just need a final ball to get through. It's a really good battle between both strikers for yellows are big lads, Lahan and, uh, and Falola. But I think Sean Alexander, 16-year-old, is dealing with them really well at the moment. So long way those battles continue. We'll see what happens in the second half. OK, the Reds are going to get us underway for the second half. I'm joined by none other than Statman Dave. It is great to be here. Lovely day. Great football. Now we've got Jake Lindsay back on the pitch now for the Reds, playing in his more familiar position out wide on the left. He was started just behind the striker. Wasn't too effective. But now we're going to see what he can do in his favourite position as the Reds win a free kick. It's going to be Jack Hall that takes this ball, uh, takes this free kick, sorry. Jack Hall puts his hand in the air, whips it in, troublesome area. And there's an offside flag against Jake Lindsay, I think. It's going uh, well so far, not bad. Um, looking at my own um, performance, I think if I do go one, I can do a bit better. Um, I've got a lot more to show. It's going well. Good performances out, out there. Good little challenge. How do you feel like the game's gone for you? I feel like it's done all right. I feel like I've tried to get on the ball when I can to show my game. Obviously, I scored as well, which was also uh, positive. But I just need to keep getting on the ball and keep doing what I can do. And that's hopefully be good enough. Back to Emerson, who's continued to spot a right back into Kavanagh. Emerson. I want to see a little bit more from Nedge in the, in the second half. Well, he's hit one for you there. <laughs> and it's caused a question that has been answered by Kevin Clark in goal on the bounce. Can he get some stats against his name, though? Can Joseph Charles register a goal in this game? And we call this series the second chance for a reason. It could be a second chance at a young age. Oh, there's a chance there on the edge of the box for Lahan, who's put his foot through it. And he, he doesn't look 19 years of age, does he? No, he doesn't. He's very well developed. And he's maybe getting a little bit more over the ball there. But good, good play from the Yellows. I think they've started the half really brightly. Sean Alexander plays it into... The big man, Rashai Palmer. A little no-look pass there. Now we could see the pace of Joshua Sude. His touch is heavy, but he gets there, drops it inside on the left foot. Can he get a shot off? Lays it back to Hudut, who drags a shot wide. Do you want to see a Sude hitting it on the left foot there? No, I like that. I like the head-up play. He slowed himself down. I think that was something in the first half where he was getting in behind time and time again, but it was that, that sort of moment waiting for his teammates to arrive. I quite like that play there. Maybe uh, Joseph Charles should have thrown a boot on that. Want the best kick here from Clark. Comes straight to Konjovko. Can't get the ball under, but he's styled it out. Finds Izu, the centre-back. Haven't seen a lot of him in the first half, but that's probably a good sign of a centre-back if you haven't been called upon yeah, too much. Yeah, definitely. That was a very good pass out wide. Chance here for Lahan and Ospina. And neither of them can convert it. Good ball in from Falola, really asking a question. Miles. Going to try and throw it to Lahan. No. Yep. Ospina. Spinner rides the challenge. Turns back oh, into it, tackle. though. And now Joshua Sude can get down this line that he loves to run and attack. Look at the shirts all around him. He drops it into Charles. Charles finds Gill. Gill's going to line up a shot on the left foot. I, I know why we're seeing it. We're seeing people, they want to score a world to try and secure their place. Mm. But decisions could be better. Still had it. He plays it into Gill. Gill turns. Does well. Sid Peters getting forward. Is he going to strike one? He is, and it's another... Long shot. And I don't mind these long shots if they're troubling the keepers, but we've seen a lot of off-target, particularly in the wind. Just think, what's the likelihood of it actually going in? Right, Techers, you find yourself 1-0 down. It's unfortunate. You know what they say, it's a game of two hours. But what players have stood out for you so far? Yeah, we've definitely got a few players who are, who are showing their ability right now on the pitch. I like, um, got centre-half Izu. He looks very calm, composed. He looks physical. Um, so I'm, I'm liking him. And then we've got a boy... Duggan um, on the wing who when he gets going he looks like a he looks like an absolute powerhouse um, just got to be a bit more confident to to initially take the ball and drive forward but he's showing some great signs as well uh, there's been a few actually I think the quality is first and foremost I think the quality of the game has actually been really quite high and it's also been very tight I mean we are one nil up Techers we are one nil up uh, it was a penalty but um, a couple of centre midfielders I think have really stood out I mean I like I'm a man I'm a, pe I'm a pep 
kind of guy. You know, we're trying to play through the thirds here. Uh, Isaac Skubic has had a good game. He's the scorer of the penalty. Sam Raj Gill also has got a very, very cultured left foot. Uh, welcoming Michael Timms, aka hello. Timsey. Hello, 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 guys. How good, are you doing? Good to have you here, mate. Thank you. Chance for a spin up. He turns into trouble, though. Cleared by Sean Alexander, who has impressed. Yeah, for sure. He's. I, I, I'm interested to see with this um, Ortiz guy as well. Uh, Ospi Ortiz, sorry. Ospina. Um, Ospina, sorry. Yeah. Ortiz. Uh, because you can tell he's unbelievably athletic um, and he's shown glimpses of, of really good feet, um, being very dangerous, especially when he tries to cut in. Oh, well oh. oh, great. I thought, I, thought that was, right. I thought that was okay, actually, from decent, Sid Peters. Decent challenge, that. I think he might be striking this, you know. It looks like he's shaping what? up. We've got Sahan. Yeah, but I don't know if is he left footed? No, neither of them are, I don't think. He's Sahan's over it. He's going to whip it in, I think. Okay, it's not the ah, best it's delivery. Not the best ball, that. Come on. Can the Reds counter here? Picks it up in midfield. Kieran Huddles. Unlucky. Oh, it was a right idea. I think yellows have actually been. They've been a bit unlucky. They've been very, very dangerous down that right hand side. And it's just save for a few bounces or. Ooh. Did he mean that, Sahan? I mean, that is, an, that is a phenomenal ball. If he meant that. Dugan up against Sid Peters here. Good little ball roll. Good strength again, from Dugan. Oh, is oh, it? Oh, great challenge. Oh, great challenge. Still on. Still on. Dugan. He's not giving this ball up easy, is Dugan. He finally fizzes it across. Oh, God. Oh, it's got to be. Oh. He just got to put some sort of body part should on it, that. Should he have just gone for the head there? He should have just one touch and in. Kind of come over to Nedge here. Nedge, yeah. Nedge, he's had a few, a few really nice touches. Especially cutting in like he's doing now. He's obviously got lovely feet. Kanjuvka gets it over to Dugan here. He's getting a lot of the ball on this right yeah. side. Dugan's been a threat. Can he beat his man? Puts it across. Great ball. Oh, oh. And it's almost in. Is that a save? I that is, is an unbelievable save. More importantly, was it a shot? I don't know. I, th I think it's a cross shot. That's mostly a cross. Tell you I'll what, give though, him the benefit of the doubt. One thing though. I'll say about Dugan is his crosses, he puts venom on them. Yes, he does, yeah. That's what you like, actually. That's And and in a way, I think that's what some of the strikers have failed to, to get them under control because he's really fizzed them in. He's sort of played alone up top. And him against those two centre-backs, I think it's been a very, very good battle. Who's going to step up to yeah. take this free is kick, though? Nedge? Is it going to be Dugan? I don't think Sayan will take it because it's on his left foot and he's not left footed. So. He's really, Izzy is really shaping up for this. Here we go. Go the on. big man from the back. He's always Ooh. too low. Looking for that slight knuckleball action by that technique. Looked like. Good little pass in for yeah. Falolo. He wasn't really ready for it, but he's rescued it. Still Falolo getting the shot oh, off. What a goal. Oh, what a goal. What a finish from Falolo. He scored a, a worldie in the trials last week. Wow. And he's done it again. Unbelievable. You could tell that was going. As soon as he hit that, the keeper looking stranded straight over him. Beautiful goal that. Oh, oh. Ball in. Can Jake Lindsay get that? Oh, oh it's, it's a it's penalty. A, it's a penalty. It's going to be a second wow. penalty for the Reds. And I think wow. that one was a penalty, to be fair. Uh, I don't know. I, 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 I'd say it is a penalty for pure clumsiness. There was no intent there. No. I just think it, it, the, 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 the right back there should have Chowdhury. been slightly more aware. Jake Lindsay up against Felix Hull in goal. What a moment it could be for him if he saves it. Lindsay. Yeah, Sends very composed. Nice. Another penalty. Wow. Two one Reds. Just like that. We're in a minute of going equal. The yellows have conceded. Yeah, and that could be the lifeline Lindsay needed as well. Right, we're nearing the end of the game. I was actually going to go ahead and ask both you and Timsy this question, but unfortunately he's co-commentating with Spence, so I can't do that. I've got you here though, Dave. Give me one player who you would put through to the next round and why. I think it's Sean Alexander. I think what he's shown on the ball, especially in the second half, the composure, always wanting it, always wanting to receive, but then dealing with the channels as well. It's, you know, a big skill of a centre-back in the modern day is to defend the full-back area because of the nature of our systems and how full-backs do get into the final third. Just been, it's been spectacular. It's been really, really good. Any issues down there, especially with someone like uh, Ospina, who played down there in the first part of the second half, just dealt with that pace, cleaned up, and he's just solid. He's a so very, very solid player, and he looks like a player that's going to do really well. Can well the Yellows played. get back in this game? Falola scored a great goal as he goes yeah. back to Nedge. Falola has been very, very impressive, actually. I think... We're, we're, oh, God, that's a... Come on, Scoobitch, you're my guy. Come on, be careful. Yeah, that's hurt us been, although Spinner's been putting some big challenges in himself. Yeah. But I think, um, yeah, Falola's, Falola has done... Good both for when he was When he was playing up front in the first half and now as a winger, I think he's the fact that he's still impressed in both positions and bagged a goal. 
Um, he's definitely been one of the standout players. Oh, Ooh. he's missed the ball there, Kanjivka. Skubic works it forward to Charles. Well Charles played. on right. to Lindsay. On. Huge Lindsay, chance for Lindsay to make it two goals. Oh, there, there we it go. is. And Lindsay does it. He's turned it around from zero to hero we in the saying. space of a few minutes. He's doubled it and he scored two goals. I think he might have just hashtagged it. Wow. And that's a, that's a bonus point. It's a Brucey um, bonus. But that's what we were saying. You know, 10 minutes ago, we were saying Lindsay's really struggled to implement his game. He's, he's, he's had a few little bright sparks, but failed to pr truly impress. And now these last 10 minutes, he's turned it around, won the penalty, scored it, and slotted that beautifully as well. That's the thing. You have to think as well, OK, he hasn't had too many chances, but the chances he has had, he's taken. And it was the last kick of the game as the ref blows the final whistle. The red team from our Saturday trials have won 3-1 against the yellow team. Two goals for Jake Lindsay. Timsey, what did you think of the match? Uh, I thought overall it was actually a very good watch. The first 10, 15 minutes, as I said, was a bit scrappy. Um, but as, as everyone sort of worked their way into the game, uh, I thought it was fairly even. And then, yeah, just... Uh, some nice bits of quality to, to, to get the goals and very impressed. Can you pick out a man of the match for us, please? I would say a man of the match for me would have to go to Skubic as a sort of midfielder-ish myself. Uh, yeah, Skubic, I think, was by far the most composed uh, on the ball, made the right decision pretty much all the time, uh, worked worked very well and um, bagged himself a goal. He did indeed. Thank you very much to Tim Z, Statman Cheers, Dave and you. Lee Hersey who joined me on commentary and we'll go to some uh, deliberations now and eventually we'll let the lads know who is going through to episode three. Okay lads, thank you very much for your help today. Much appreciated. We've got the tough job now of basically halving our group of lads from uh, about 30 to about 15 or 16 for next episode. So. Let's chat. Let's talk about the strikers and on the strikers. I think that's going to be a competitive area. For me personally, um, of the strikers, we had the out and out strikers, if you like, because there's a few players that can play there. The ones that, that resonated with me the most were, were both on the same team, and that's Lahan, the big lad, and then it's also Falola who scored the goal. Both different strengths to their game. We could put them both through. We need at least two strikers, really, to go through. Um, if, before we talk about them two, the other two to consider would be, would be Charles, the older striker, and uh, would be Coleman. For me, I, I don't think Coleman was strong enough. Falola scored a great goal, and he's done that two different occasions in this, this process now. He, yeah. He's not always in the game, he's not always electric, but you can't ignore that. We all agree Falola on, on the goal he scored, he goes through alone. It's definitely over the gate, you know. It's more than that, of course. Dave, did you have anyone we haven't mentioned yet that you like? I think number 26 has got to go through. Sean Alexander, fantastic defending the channels, had a big physical battle that he dealt with first up, but also the composure on the ball, never hiding, and he's a player that's 16 years old. He's pretty incredible, and considering he's playing against players that are three, four, five years older than him, he's, he's got to go through. So yeah, the number number 50, Skubic, was really impressive for me in the middle. I thought he was uh, really composed. Uh, decision making was outstanding. I think he he knew when he had to kind of force it and drive forward, and he knew when to keep it simple. And it was yeah inspir instrumental for that team. Fine. We're all going to agree on Skubic. Then's going to go for because I don't, I don't think anyone's got a bad word to say about him, have they? No. Okay. Well, I think we all agree that Joshua Sude has got to go through. I think he was doing the similar things this week as he was in the trials. Scott Pollock said, "Remember the name at the end of the day." So, Andy, you were managing him. What did you think of him? For me, he was, when he got the ball, he drove well. He uh, stretched them. He's obviously got a bit of pace about him, and he's got an end product as well. At the end of the day, so I think he'll he'll go far. Jack Hall, uh, I think when he was on the left, not his natural position, but he played quite well, um, good on the ball, and I think he could fill in fullback, which is quite a weak spot for us. I'm going for Carlos as well. Um, I just think he's just one of the people that you can genuinely train into a position, and he'll pick it up. He just looks like he wants to work hard and work for a team. Right, boys, we've got 16. But I'm just thinking, if, if we don't take the second keeper, because for me there's, there's one standout keeper, we could take another striker, because we've only got one striker right now. And if we've got one more striker spot, it's between number 92, Charles, and number 89, Lahan. We can only take one of them. Who do we take? Right, lads. Well done. Thank you very much for putting the effort in in that 90 minute game. I found it very enjoyable to watch and commentate over. I think there's some really good performances in there and it was generally a, a, a good level game and a good contest. So well done. Uh, we've obviously got to that point in the day now where I need to let some of you go. Good news is we are actually putting 17 people through to the next episode. 13 of you obviously will be eliminated. There's a couple of people that have kind of 
ruled themselves out for unavailability, unfortunately, but obviously we need people to be available for the episodes and they're, they're going to miss a few. So ev every single one of you has literally beat thousands of people to get this fast. You've done fantastic, okay? I'm going to give the 17 names and numbers that are going through now. They're in a random order. Uh, first name going through, uh, he scored a penalty today, is Isaac Skubich, number 50. Well done, mate. Uh, next player, I'm going to use his nickname, 35, Izu. Izu, well done, mate. This lad has scored a couple of big goals in the process already, has to go through. Falola, 81. Well done, mate. Next up, really impressed with this young defender, number 26, Sean Alexander. Well done, mate. Another defender making it through. Is it Louis Burkane or is it Lewis? Lewis, Lewis Burkane. Well done, Lewis. Well done. This lad's been very impressive. I know that some of the comments in episode one were flooded with his name. Joshua Asude. Well done, mate. Superb. Getting through with two cheeky goals at the end. Jake Lindsay, 63. Well done, Jake. Next going through is number 59, Samraj Gill. Well done, mate. We have number 53, Sehan. Next man making it through is number one, Louis Lawler. How do you feel like the day went for you? I felt it went really well. Um, Really positive. I'm just ashamed the fact that the team I was on had lost, but I felt that we were the better team overall. Um, we were organised, just couldn't put the ball in the back of the net, but and still, I've done my bit and I'm happy that I'm going through. Number 88, Javin Dugan, well done. I thought at the, at the beginning, the first half of the game, I was a bit sloppy, um, making a lot of mistakes, but after I got into the game, I was beating my man, trying to get a couple of crosses in, trying to be more vocal, um, just trying to keep it simple because obviously when it gets to men's football you're not going to have the chance to do all the skills and flary stuff you just got to keep it simple and make chances Next player, number 66, Carlos Ospina Well done pal Jack Hall, 62 87, Nedge Well done Nedge um, Personally, I thought today was a tough day there was a lot of good players on show um, but in my eyes, I thought I did enough to get through. I thought I was dangerous. I had a couple unlucky shots that could have gone in. Keeper pulled off some good saves, but yeah, two and two, I'm happy to go through. Next player making it through to episode three is number 64, Tyler Kavanagh. <laughs> Penultimate player making it through, Adi Lahan, number 89. Well done. Final player, commiserations to those that haven't made it, but the final player is going to be Felix Hull, number 13. Well done, mate. <laughs> Look forward to seeing you next episode, boys. You're going to be taking on hashtag United team, so uh, we'll see you then. Commiserations to those of you that didn't make it, but thank you very much for being in the process. Fantastic, and I'm sure we'll see you again soon. Well done, boys. <laughs> That's obviously the horrible bit again, about to eliminate some players. We only eliminated 13 players, to be fair. We're taking 17 through to the squad for hashtag, but obviously there's some really good players in that 13. I, I don't feel great, but I also feel great about the lads we have given a chance, and the 17 boys still alive with the chance to win this amazing prize. So I try and dwell on the positive rather than the negative of losing people. Okay guys, that is it for episode two of the Hashtag Academy Second Chance series. I'm loving this series. I'm really happy with the 17 man squad we're taking through to play Hashtag United. The question is, how good are they? How are they going to do against title winning Hashtag United going of course up to step five of non-league next year and the winner of this competition is going to be playing at step five of non-league so they need to be able to play with the likes of Hashtag United players and if the team in general can do well and maybe even beat Hashtag we, we've got a great problem on our hands which is a, a squad of talented players who haven't played together that much. If they go the other way and they maybe lose to Hashtag it's going to show some weaknesses and maybe only one or two performances will stand out. Either way, we're going to leave next episode with eight players. They will be our final eight. And that, from that point on, that is where you guys start voting and helping us whittle down to our final two who will contest the final in just a few 
weeks time. So let me know in the comments below, as you always do, who you think is going to win this process. A lot of people are talking about uh, the likes of uh, Asude, Joshua Asude in the first episode, but who else has stood out? Jake Lindsay's grabbed himself two goals. We saw some really, really impressive centre-back performances as well and players all over the park. So I want to hear your thoughts. Drop a like on the video if you're enjoying the series. Subscribe for more. Get yourself the Glitch app. Use the link in the description to download it for free. You need to do it because that's how you're going to vote in future episodes once we get to the final eight. So make sure you're ready to do just that. And of course, until next time, don't forget to hashtag it.